connecting Laravel to a database. In our last lesson, we created our post controller and we set up simple arrays to act as dummy data. But in a real world application, we are definitely going to want to connect to a database. So here's how you do it. First, go to your .env file. This is your environment file. Now, there's going to be a whole bunch of stuff here, and you'll learn that throughout this series. The section of the environment file that we want to focus on is the database connection, database host, port, the database name itself, the username, and the password. These are the settings that Laravel will use to configure the connection to the database. The only one I'm going to change is this one to change the database name. Now, how is Laravel using these? Well, if we go to our config, we can scroll all the way down to database. And if we scroll up, you can see that we have all these options. And the first one is going to be default. What is the default configuration or default connection that Laravel is used to configure itself? Well, it's referencing the ENV database connection variable. So the default connection Laravel will use, DB connection, it's MySQL. This tells Laravel to find the MySQL connection within the connections array. Notice though, we could also optionally use SQLite. We could use MongoDB if you wanted to configure your custom driver um, and all of these other options. But we're going to stick with MySQL. And the MySQL configuration uses the env, .env file, the environment variables, to get the database host, to get the database port, to get the database name, and to get the username and password. If you used Homebrew, all of these settings are already set up properly. The database connection, we already found out that this is actually just used in the config database.php file. These other options, though, are actually used to connect to the database. And if you followed our previous lessons and you installed through Homebrew, then these are set up properly. The username is root and the password is actually empty. Now, if you used something else to install MySQL that is not Homebrew, then most likely 98% of the time, if I had a guess, the database host and database port will still be the same. The database username and the database password, you will have to go to the tool you used to install MySQL, you'll have to go to that tool's documentation to find the proper database username and password. If you used Homebrew to install, good to go. So here's what we're going to do now. We're going to open up our terminal. And if you're using Homebrew, you want to just say brew services start MySQL. Next, you want to actually log into the MySQL using the MySQL username and then the dash P flag. This will ask you for your password. Mine is empty, so I'll press enter. Now we're within MySQL. And so all we're going to do is we're going to say create database, and then whatever you named your database, that's the one you're going to create. And to prove that you properly created the database, you can even run show databases. So that did work properly, and now we have a database, and we are good to go. Next, what we're actually going to do is we're going to install a user interface for interacting with our databases in general and our database tables. We're going to use phpMyAdmin. So all you want to do is you will actually want to CD up completely out of your project. And you want to run this command, composer create-project 
phpMyAdmin slash phpMyAdmin. Once installed, I'm going to clear out my console. We're going to cd into this PHP my admin directory. Within our PHP my admin directory, we want to move the config sample.inc.php file to config.inc.php. Once moved, you want to open that config.inc.php file within any text editor of your choice. I'm going to use Sublime. Scroll down to this allow no password. I'm going to set it to true. If you have any security concerns for whatever reason, then that's up to you. But for this tutorial, for teaching purposes, I'm setting it to true because it's just easier not to have to type it in every time. All right, then back in our terminal, you can either do PHP S and then do whatever localhost address you want to do and 232 is an open port for me so I'm gonna do that Whoop. oh you might have to do sudo alright um, and I'm gonna just open that I was able to just boot up a local server and I now have my PHP my admin alternatively you can also open your PHP admin using valet so I'm going to cd back out and I am going to use valet to open up PHP my admin. This will just give it a bit of a better looking name and that is in one of our previous lessons. Again, doesn't work on Windows and that PHP-S does, but if you do have Mac or Linux, it looks pretty cool. So here's how we're going to finish this lesson off. We're going to go to our Laravel 7 database. We're going to create a new table called posts. We're going to give it three columns and we're simply going to first give it an ID. It is going to be an integer. We're going to scroll all the way over here and we're going to say AI auto incrementing primary. That is going to be our auto incrementing primary key. That's the ID of the post. It's going to be unique and primary automatically counting up as we create new posts. Next we're going to create our title column. We're going to make the type verchar. We're going to make the value a maximum of 50. And then we're going to let it default to null. After that, we are going to add the content column. This content column, uh, we should probably be making it a text, but let's make it verchar for now just to keep it simple. And I'm just going to say 150 and default it to null. Then we're going to save it. And la la, our post table has columns. In our project root, we're going to use PHP artisan and this special command called tinker. Tinker is an interactive shell or console that allows us to use Laravel services. One of those Laravel services is actually this DB. You'll have to use that backslash in front of it. We're going to use this DB this DB service and actually get the posts table. Ultimately, using the insert method to add a title, says cool title, and to add content. Hey there, hello world, and boom. And we're actually going to press enter, and just like that, we used Laravel to add data to our database. Cool title. Hey there. Hello world. How cool is that? So we just interacted with our MySQL database, inserting data into our posts table using Laravel. Now let's get out of that terminal and let's actually go back to our post controller, the controller we created last lesson. And we'll close it out by doing this. In our index method or action, you're supposed to return all posts. So let's use the DB and access the posts table and just get all of our posts. Finally, back in our browser, we'll hit our posts endpoint. And what do we get? 
Check that out. We get our posts. And of course, if we kept adding more posts, and let's clear that out. Boom. We could just reload our page, and we automatically have two posts. It gets all of the posts from our database and shows it on our post page. Sabula.